the New Orleans Saints are an example of a team that isn't all that particularly good, and everybody pretty well, good and well knows that, but they can still be entertaining. They can still be fun to watch. You can be bad and be fun. And the New Orleans Saints, a lot of times, are a bad team that still happens to be fun to watch. And you look at this team, and you know they're really in this awkward situation, an awkward position, because you're clearly coming to the tail end of Drew Brees' career. Does he have one more year? Two? Three? Four? Only time will tell. But you know that that window of time of Drew Brees' career is winding down. And for Saints fans that have enjoyed a, quite a bit of success with Drew Brees at the helm and Sean Payton as the head coach, you know you're probably not getting back to the promised land with the combination of Sean Payton and Drew Brees. To which some people might sit there and say, well, if you're not going to get back to the promised land with them, why would you keep them both around? You could take that money that you tie into Drew Brees under the salary cap and reinvest that in other places in the roster. And frankly, if Sean Payton's not the guy now, then why not find a guy that can help you build something new for that next generation of the Saints organization so that way when Brees is gone, you could still be relevant and still be in the mix. Well, that sounds great in theory, but the Saints situation is a little bit different. And let's face it. For all those many years, for in large part, with the occasional blip in the radar from the Jim Moore-led Saints teams of the mid-late 80s and early 90s, uh, nobody's given a shit about the Saints. Nobody gives a fuck about the Saints. And all those pretend wannabe fans, a lot of them I should say, you know, once Drew Brees and Sean Payton are gone, especially Drew Brees, they will go back, right back to not giving a fuck about this team and this organization. And the simple fact of the matter is... You're talking about a team that when Drew Brees and Sean Payton came in, this was a team that had went through the 2005 Cena, uh, season excuse me, and the disaster that was Hurricane Katrina on so many different levels, not the least of which the damage done to the Superdome and the fact that they couldn't play their games there. Um, you just you look at what happened with that city and all that city had to deal with and still deals with to this day. And you see what Sean Payton and Drew Brees represented. And this is one of these situations where you can sometimes be loyal to a fault. And I don't have a problem with the fault of that loyalty. I really don't. Because you're talking about Drew Brees. Beyond question to me for years, I always thought Reggie White was the greatest free agent signing of all time. And for a long time he was. Drew Brees has surpassed him and surpassed him by a lot. And I don't say that lightly, and I absolutely say that with no disrespect to the minister of defense, the reverend, whatever you wanted to call Reggie White, rest his soul. He's contributing in heaven, as my dad used to say. Um, but Drew Brees is the greatest free agent signing of all time. And it's easy to think now about what the Saints are and where they've been in recent years and forget just how bad they were and how horrible of an organization was for so many damn years. And at some point in time, while it's great to contend for titles and contend for divisional crowns and everything else, sometimes, unfortunately, you're in a situation where you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And at this point in time, you might as well just ride out the string. And that's exactly where the Saints are as an organization, frankly, is they're in a position where they've just pretty much got to ride out the string. You know? So you're going to have seasons that are lost where they have some highlights, but then they have some tough times. And you look at this year, another perfect example of that. He started off 0-3, only went 2-4 and in the division, not good formulas for success. They lost seven games by a total of seven points or less. So they were competitive. You know, they were, a fun, again, a fun team to watch, as they usually are. But they really got hit by a hard schedule. They had to play the AFC West this year, which meant they had to face off against Kansas City and Oakland and Denver. And then they had to face off against Atlanta twice and Tampa Bay twice. And they had to play teams in the NFC such as Seattle, such as Detroit. And you look at that. Tampa Bay, 
almost was a playoff team. They had to play them twice. Atlanta went to the Super Bowl. They played them twice. They had to play the New York Giants, playoff team. Seattle, playoff team. Detroit, playoff team. Oakland, playoff team. Kansas City, playoff team. Denver, almost playoff team. So that's nine of the 16 games they had on their schedule were against those teams. That's a tough, brutal schedule for the Saints. And, you know, no matter what, they just weren't going to be successful. And part of the problem in recent years, honestly, has been uh, the fact that this is a one-sided, one-dimensional football team, and they lack balance. They put a lot of pressure on Drew Brees in that offense, and sometimes Brees in that offense is still good enough to get the job done, and sometimes they're not. You look at it, first in the league in passing yards, first in total yards, second in points scored. So when you talk about teams should be able to outscore everybody, the Saints are legitimately one of those teams that most weeks can potentially outscore somebody. But it still results in losing records because their defense is just so bad. Their defense is not average. Their defense is not mediocre. Their defense is boo boo bottom of the league, shitty bad. 30th in passing yards allowed, 25th in total yards allowed, 31st in points allowed. So it's great that you score all these points, but it doesn't matter if you give up as many or more because that means you're losing a bunch of games in the NFL. And that's exactly what the Saints are doing. And this comes down to the defense being so bad because it just hasn't been an organizational priority for several years. And in recent years, when they've started to try and prioritize doing things a little bit differently, they haven't really done all that well in the NFL draft. Some of their recent drafts in particular haven't been all that stellar. And that eventually starts to catch up with the team. When you tie so much money in the quarterback position and a couple of their marquee players, there's not a lot of money to spread around and distribute throughout different levels of the organization. And eventually that will catch up with you. And I think that has the past couple of years really started to catch up with the New Orleans Saints, in particular when you combine that with less than stellar drafting. Now the 2016 draft class, you, know, you look at Michael Thomas, their second round pick out of Ohio State. I'm not surprised he was a good fit in that office, man. He was really good as a rookie. Uh, Sheldon Rankins had a flash here or there, but he had some injuries, so he lost time during the season, and there's still a lot of questions about him. Von Bell, a lot of questions still about him. You know, While in theory that 2016 draft class could be better than some of their previous ones, you, know, you have one guy that really showed out and a couple of guys that you have questions about, and again, unfortunately, the guy that really showed out was the guy on the offensive side of the ball. It's the guys on the defensive side of the ball that you have some significant questions about. You know, going back to 2015, Andrus Pete, they missed on him. They drafted him to play left tackle. He's playing guard, I believe. Stephon Anthony, you know, he's okay, but he hasn't quite progressed the way I'd hope. Howdy Kikaha, um, guy they took in the second round out of Washington, you know, injured again, missed the season. You look at the 2014 draft class, Brandon Cooks is pretty much the only player of any note that's left from that class. That's just three drafts ago, people. So when you look at the last three drafts, there are only two real true impact players or two wide receivers. That's just simply not good enough. And it reflects in the imbalance in this team where they can put up a bunch of points on offense, even though at times I would still like them to be more balanced on the offensive side of the ball. I think this is in a situation where Drew Brees gets that Peyton Asitis where he tries to take over and he tries to do too much as a quarterback because he's given too much leeway and he doesn't have enough trust in the running game. If this team ran the ball more and controlled the clock more and imposed more physical will offensively, it would reduce the pressure on Drew Brees, meaning he would have to force through fewer throws, potentially throw fewer interceptions. Most importantly of all, though, not only would you bring balance to your offense, you bring balance to your entire team because you help your defense rest and you keep your defense off the field. The most effective defense is a talented yet well-rested defense. I don't care if you have an incredibly talented defense. If they're on the field way too damn much because your team scores too quickly and they don't run the ball consistently effectively enough, eventually that's going to catch up with you. And that's what's happened with the Saints over the past few years. Now, unlike the past couple of years, they're in a decent place from a salary cap standpoint. They've got about $30 million in cap space. You know, are they going to try and re-sign Brandon Cooks to a long-term deal? Now that he's eligible to be negotiated with, we'll see. I don't know how active they'll get in free agency. They probably should spend a little bit of money to fill a gap or two here and there on the defensive side of the ball because they still have holes all over the place on the defense. And when you look at this upcoming draft, 
This is so vital and so important because you are at the tail end of Drew Brees and Sean Payton's run. Frankly, I was really surprised that Sean Payton is sticking around for 2017 because I thought after 2016, especially once the Rams job came up, I was really surprised the Rams didn't come calling about what it would take to be able to get Sean Payton out of his um, Saints contract to come to Los Angeles to coach the Rams. But he's here again. They've got to do better in the draft, flat out. And their primary focus here has to be the defensive side of the ball. You can't go three years where your two best players in the draft are both wide receivers because that's not getting the job done. It's defeating the purpose. They need help at corner. They need just about as much help as at the edge pass rush position, defensive end, opposite Cameron Jordan. They need, they need help everywhere. They could use some talent and speed in the linebacking core. They could use a compliment inside of Sheldon Rankins. I still think they could use a playmaker in the secondary at safety. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it real. This Saints team defensively has needs everywhere. And if you want to sit there and say, well, they got this guy and they got that guy. If the name you're not bringing up is Cameron Jordan, then what the fuck are you talking about? Because his defense stinks. It stunk again in 2016. And if they don't get a major infusion of talent anywhere and everywhere on this defense, they're going to stink again in 2017. It's going to be a shame because you waste yet another year of Drew Brees at the tail end of his career. You have needs everywhere. If they drafted three fucking defensive ends, okay, you're putting a premium on getting to the quarterback. In a division where you play against Matt Ryan, Jameis Winston, and Cam Newton twice a year, respectively, it makes fucking sense that you want to get pressure on the quarterback. If you draft multiple corners and multiple safeties, again, you lack in talent so badly in the back end of that defense, that makes perfect fucking sense. The bottom line is, with their first round pick, best available defensive player. Second round pick, best available defensive player. Third round pick, same thing. Fourth round pick, same thing. Sixth round pick, same thing. Seventh round pick, same thing. If the New Orleans Saints, no matter what their board says, drafts anything other than defense with each of those six picks, they're fucking stupid, period. I don't care if you're sitting there in round four and you've got an offensive player that you have with the first round grade on him. You find a defensive player you either had a first round or second round grade on and you fucking take him. Because it doesn't matter if you add any more talent to that offense because even if you do, you're still going to continue to find yourself in the same damn spot. And that's what it comes down to. You know, really, for all intents and purposes, the Saints are in a mode where they really desperately need to totally rebuild. But unfortunately, because of extenuating circumstances at play here, you just can't let Drew Brees go for nothing. You just can't fire Sean Payton for nothing. So unfortunately, Saints fans, unless this team really does well in the draft, which I wouldn't get my hopes up for, and they hit heavy on the def defensive side of the board, and they actually hit it right, which again, I wouldn't count on, Expect more of the same of a bad team that's fun to watch, that wins some games that are close and loses a bunch more uh, in 2017.